still on Nigeria's 2024 budget proposal. In a public presentation, the Minister of Budget and Economy Planning shed light on the intricate details of the budget. He emphasized that the budget was crafted to focus on revenue generation and expenditure management, aligning the economy for increased domestic investment. Some of the critical allocations in the 2024 budget were highlighted during the presentation. The government has allocated substantial funds to enhance national defense and internal security, reflecting a commitment to ensuring the safety and well-being of our citizens. Critical allocations, among others, the education center, where at least 2.18, our 2.2 trillion, uh, which is our 7.9 percent of the federal government budget, is allocated to education, which is higher than the 2023. Equally, the health sector received an increase in uh, to about 1.4 trillion, 1.33 trillion, sorry, uh, including immunization. Equally, the defense and security sector received about 3.25 trillion, which is about 12% of the budget. This is quite significant, and especially following from the provision of close to 600 billion in the supplementary appropriation that was passed about two months ago to them to the defense and security sector. Equally, infrastructure spending, which is now 5% of the budget. And part of the instruction of Mr. President to the cabinet is, as he has done in Lagos, bringing private sector into infrastructure. We have, he has mandated all ministries to examine how to assess investors who are willing uh, to put money in infrastructure. What the government can put in infrastructure is small compared to what the private sector can bring. Social development program, you may recall that a loan of $800 million was obtained from the World Bank to support the uh, social development and poverty reduction, as well as the appropriation of 400 billion naira in the supplementary. In addition to that, now the sum of 534 <coughs> billion, which is, is yeah, marked for social development and poverty reduction programs. When I joined on the morning show by Dr. Lucia Gun Vincent, Associate Professor of Taxation and Finance at the School of Management and Social Sciences, Pan Atlantic University, Lekki, Lagos, and Dr. Sani Shinkafi, Executive Director, Patriot for Advancement of Peace and Social Development. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Vincent and uh, uh, Dr. Shinkafi. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Well, qu two questions. Thank you, Doctor. Yes, two straight Thank questions. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to join you. Thank you. Two straight questions uh, for both of you. Uh, uh, Dr. Vincent, the question to you is this. What do you think of the basic assumptions in that, uh, in that budget proposal? Because it's based on a number of assumptions. 750 Naira uh, to a dollar as exchange rate, uh, crude oil production of one point. Uh, eight barrels, uh, uh, a million barrels uh, per day, um, you know, uh, expected growth of about 3.4% uh, above the uh, uh, expected global uh, growth uh, for 2024, um, revenue of uh, about 18 trillion. And then, of course, the president is also saying that uh, tax revenue uh, to GDP will increase by about 18% from below the 10% uh, 
uh, that uh, it is uh, presently. So you teach taxation, you know, that taxation part of it, I hope you also look at it. And for you, Dr. Shinkafi, one of the promises uh, by the Minister of Budget Planning is that civil society will be involved in uh, assessing this budget, that there will be participation. Uh, do you think that this uh, National Assembly that has already, <clears throat> through Akpabio, the Senate President, and Abbas, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, already promised that the uh, budget will be passed with dispatch? <laughs> do you think that uh, this particular National Assembly is really interested in input uh, from uh, the public? And why should that be important? But let me start with uh, uh, Dr. Ulu Vincent. Dr. Vincent? Okay, Dr. Abati, thank you very much. I'm pleased to join you. Um, looking at the assumptions underlining the budget, um, <coughs> from my own perspective, some of the assumptions they are actually apt why certain assumptions are really skeptical. I'm skeptical about achievement of those assumptions. One, firstly, the exchange rate at 750, I am not too sure if the exchange rate at 750 is really achievable because the real fundamentals are determining the exchange rate and the fluctuation has not been addressed. And for me, if corruption has not been tackled in government circle, uh, that exchange rate of 750 is not achievable. And I'll go into it briefly. Uh, looking at the way the government operates and the way the government both as federal and subnational, the way they are structured and the uh, the buying behavior or the procurement procedure, you will discover that over time, about 50% of, of the budget, they really go into what we call padding. And what is padding? Padding is just adding money for the boys as part of the budget. And the currency, Currency for negotiation of that is in dollars. Whatever that is being procured, just assume that 50% of that money is lost to corruption, is lost to settlement. And the, the currency for settlement is always in dollars. And whichever form, if the currency for settlement is in dollar, this will impact highly it will impact highly on foreign exchange rates at the market. Because whoever that is dealing with government will be looking for dollar here and there as of national and at the federal level. Look at the budget of 27 trillion. Even last year, budget of 24 trillion. At the subnational, the total budget was about 11 trillion. Assuming 50% of that, <laughs> we actually go into corruption, and the currency for corruption is foreign exchange. That will overrun the entire reserve. The 50% approximately will be about $35 billion that you need to, you need to exchange Naira for to, in order for you to go into certain. So what is driving the exchange rate? Government has not been able to address it. Forget about whatever structural and monetary apparatus put in place. The major driver of foreign exchange is corruption. And that money will come out, and the officials will, will request for dollars, and that will mount pressure. That is number one. Number two, the oil, oil price benchmark, um, the, that is reasonable as far as I'm concerned, considering the current price of the dollar you know, at the international market. I believe that is quite uh, attainable. And in terms of quantity, if government should continue with the way it's going now, 
trying to ensure that we wrap up production level, we clear, we clear up the we clear up the bandits, and we are able to actually take charge of the production and chase the bad guys away. We can actually uh, attain the production expectation. In terms of inflation, uh, inflation rate, it, it seems it's dicey. Considering the current inflation rate of about 28% and looking at it trending down, uh, it, requires a, a lot of, it requires a lot of effort. Uh, it uh, presupposes that uh, we'll be doing well, we'll be doing fine in agriculture. Uh, many people will go back to the farm and production level will, will rise. And of course, uh, we'll be able to import at quite reasonable rates because we are still very much uh, import dependent in terms of basic food items that we used to, that, that basic you know, needed in, in a typical household. So uh, it's skeptical, but it's equally uh, quite uh, achievable. Um, in, in terms of, in, in, in terms of uh, the debt, the government trying to pull down on the debt, uh, it, it, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because uh, we no longer, we, the government has removed subsidy and that should equally come back to actually do most of the funding. In fact, I'm expecting the debt level, uh, the, debt, the, the, the deficit, the deficit financing part of the budget. I'm expecting it to go down beyond this because of course we have removed subsidy. We should expect that that area should trend down significantly because we are able to pull back the money into proper use uh, during the fiscal year. Um, considering <clears throat> the non-debt recurrent, the non-debt recurrent of 9.9 uh, .9 trillion, we can say government has done very well. When you even consider the the three major area uh, that make up the total budget size, the non-debt recurrent, the debt itself and capital expenditure. We, we can say there is improvement when compared to what we had in 2023. But we cannot totally say that would be the case because it's still an estimate. I will not expect government to start thinking about maybe at the third quarter of the year, to start thinking about extra budgetary allocation or supplementary budget. That, that will throw all these uh, estimates out of proportion and we may, begin to, we may begin to face reality. Indeed, this is an estimate. This is not the reality. We, we, we wait to see the reality. But it's better for government to stop the act of supplementary budget because it's an indication that government is not planning. It's an indication that planning is very poor. That is the meaning. So uh, we'll wait and see if that is uh, actually attainable. GDP growth, expected GDP growth at 3.8%. Uh, it's very ambitious. It's very ambitious, but it's achievable. For instance, government is trying to look into recapitalization of banks. Uh, th that will add tremendously to the GDP. Uh, if we are able to have some of the FDI and foreign portfolio investment come back to the country, of course, all this might likely add to the you know, GDP, GDP growth. And with the current management of banditry, uh, if farmers are able to go back to the farm, all these areas can aggregate together to actually add up to that increase in GDP expectation. That is my view for now. Okay, Dr. Dr. Shinkafe, I was asking you about how civil society can participate in the process and what do you think of the president's emphasis 
on social investment, on education, on generating more revenue, and uh, using this budget of renewed hope, it is called, to provide economic prosperity. Are you as optimistic as the president? Well, the, the highlight of the budget presentation by Mr. President in the joint session of the National Assembly on 29 November 2023, it has given hope to Nigerians. Going by the uh, estimated revenue and also the deposit financing and the, also the aggregate expenditure of uh, 27.5 trillion naira. And even the oil benchmark, if you look at the oil benchmark in 2023, is $70 per barrel. Now it has been raised to 77 uh, Seventy-seven point nine six uh, dollar per barrel, at exchange rate of seven hundred and fifty naira, and even the production capacity also has increased compared to last year. Last year is one point seven uh, seventy uh, uh, per barrel. The daily oil production per day. Now it has been also increased to 1.78 uh, 1 uh, oil production per day. So looking at the, the highlight and the emphasis on the macroeconomic stability, social investment, overhaul of the security architect, and also mitigation of the impact of source subsidy removal. Going by what is happening in the country, the inflationary rate is on persistent level on daily basis. The standard of living is high because of the hard issue of the uh, subsidy removal on foil. So I think with the Renew Hope Budget 2024, and the, with the major, major uh, uh, expenditure or uh, expenditure allocated to the various sector of the economy, I think Nigeria has hope in the next, uh, in this uh, 2024 fiscal year. Going by the deposit financing, you see, Nigeria has been experiencing budget deposit for many decades. In the history of Nigeria, the only years we have surplus budget is 1996 and 1995. But since then, for many decades, Nigeria has been doing deposit budget. And the, there's a lot of consequences and implications in the economy or in the macroeconomic stability when a country is always uh, proposing a uh, budget deficit, there's going to be a sluggish uh, economic economy and also the investment on the debt servicing. And the, inch, and the inflationary rate will always go at the galloping rate. So what I was saying, the it required, the government should try to, to downsize the recurrent expenditure. That is government overspending and also focus on the projected revenue, how to raise the revenue status of the country. So in this situation, why the Senate president said they would involve civil society in budget tracking or in budget uh, supervision, I think uh, civil society hands are tied unless and until fiscal responsibility act 
is amended. Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007 clearly spell out how the budget should be transparent and how the budget should be accountable to Nigerians. And it is very clear in the Fiscal Responsibility Act that every quarter, ministries, departments, and agencies of government, of the federal government, should publish the accounts of their expenditure, that is their income and expenditure account to the National Assembly for public scrutiny. So if the a fiscal Responsibility Act mandated the federal government ministries, department agencies to publish their income and expenditure account and also submit to the National Assembly for, for check and balances. I think uh, the civil society hands are tied in terms of budget tracking and also in terms of budget uh, okay. monitoring. <clears throat> monitoring. Okay. So, um, do, do, Dr. Shinkafi, I'll come to you first. Um, I'm happy you talk about Fiscal Responsibility Act 07. Do you know that the projected level of deficit is higher now than the 3% threshold stipulated in the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2007? The Fiscal Responsibility Act However, yes. allows the government to exceed the 3% threshold if it's justified by threats to national security. But there are no justification by threats now as we speak to national security. We are already exceeding the Fiscal Responsibility Act as regards level of deficits higher than the 3% threshold. Have we not started the dance of shenanigan already. That's number one. Number two question I'd like to ask is the mentality of padding. We all remember the work done by Honorable Jubrin then that revealed his own colleagues yes. and the padding that was going on as regards the budget in the National Assembly. Mm. When this budget still gets scrutinized by the National Assembly, we see how can we stop this cycle? of padding. Can you answer those two questions? Uh, 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 Professor Vincent, good to see you again, my brother. You two can take at these two questions after uh, Dr. Shikafi answers these questions. See you On the Fiscal I... Responsibility Act 2007, it was clearly stipulated that GDP, that is gross domestic uh, product, should not exceed 3%. But there is exception in the clause, which says that unless there is a threat on national security and human development. So going by the, by the, by the highlight of the budget, Mr. President have given more emphasis on the national social security safety, looking at the hard economic situation the Nigerian populace are facing due to the uh, impact of withdrawal of policy subsidy. So uh, the, the, the act permitted or allow that's a window that if there's a national threat, that is national security, going by the present security situation in Nigeria, no, 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 no region in this country is safe. All the six geopolitical zones have their peculiar security threat, which is, uh, to, has to do with the national security. If you look at the, the Northwest zone, it has been uh, debuted by armed banditry, cattle rustling, kidnapping poor ransom, uh, imposition of levies, taxes by bandit to the villagers. And uh, many villagers and communities have <coughs> abandoned their palm uh, land and they cannot uh, cultivate their land and harvest food crops. So it's a threat to human development. It's a threat to national security. 
if you look at the eastern part of the country, the, there's a lot of uh, IPOF, high rise in insecurity, a lot of a bit treasonable felonies of the um, uh, segment of the uh, uh, IPOF are trying to cause. So there's serious threat to national security and human development in the country. So I think uh, uh, the, the, there was no any violation of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. And on the issue of budget padding, uh, Honorable Jibrim have raised these issues time without number on the budget padding. This budget padding, if a, if a collaboration between even some members of the National Assembly and also ministries, departments, and agencies of government. So if that's a proper check and balancing, budget tracking, and also strategic, strategic plan to checkmate the excesses of this corrupt uh, public office holder, I think we can able to, to check the, thoroughly the consequences of budget padding. Because the problem we're having, uh, you see some ministers, some uh, head of agencies will be lobbying from the members of the National Assembly to incorporate some constituency project to them. And some of these projects, even being incorporated into their constituencies, they will not execute the projects. And sometimes some of the members of the National Assembly are even the one to introduce a contractor to execute the project. So there should be a, 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 a thorough, thorough monitoring on the execution of the budget, especially on the issue of the capital expenditure. Even on the recurrent expenditure, there should be a, there should be a, a, a minimal uh, uh, this thing, benchmark on how the, uh, there should be a spending, unnecessary spending on international, on international trips. Seminars, workshops are all part of the recurrent expenditure. So there should be a, a lot of check and balances on the part of the executives, legislature, on the okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. spending okay. throughout the fiscal year. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Shinkafi. Uh, Professor Vincent? Okay, uh, Rufai, thank you very much. I'm good to see you. Uh, rather, I, want to I will want to commend the current uh, ESCO for actually considering that the budget deficit should be, should be brought down. And that's actually what they are currently doing from 6.11% in 2023 so 3.88% is commendable. And I think uh, if that particular signal is anything to go by, I think it will be on downward trend. And government may want to keep to that 3% uh, of the GDP going forward. I think that is what government is trying to do. So on that note, I would like to commend the government. And indeed, just like the last speaker presented, we still have a couple of, we still have quite uh, a lot of threats around the country. Is it the threats, you know, uh, we are facing in terms of crude oil production? Is enough justification that for us to wrap up production, for us to get up to that two million barrel per day and above, we really need to spend more on security. So I think it's enough justification to actually go beyond the threshold of three, to go beyond the, uh, the limit of 3%. Uh, coming to the issue of budget padding, uh, indeed, two major, two major things I know that they, they, they will actually render useless. No matter the amount of money you vote as budget, no matter the amount of money you vote into uh, capital spending, 
project padding and over invoicing. These are the real two evils that are really depriving the nation of a very good standard of living. Honestly, I don't know how we are going to do it. These two things, forget it. Even if government likes can vote the entire budget as capital spending, I wish sure that everything we actually go into capital spending has it not been loaded? And beyond being loaded, are we not treating big time over invoicing when a project of two billion is supposed to be executed for less than 500 million? And at the end of the day, everything is, has become useless irrespective of the amount of money voted. But what I think can checkmate this, like, budget, like Mr. President said, that the budget is meant to finance programs and projects. In other words, what Mr. President is saying is that the budget is a PBB budget, program-based budget. In a program-based budget regime, uh, Every spending is tied to a program of government, is tied to a project of government in which government has analyzed the implication, must have done the impact assessment on the citizenry and believe that this is justified to go into. We'll take a short break, we'll come back, we'll talk some more.